Today, CO2 snapback confirms case for action. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, where well, there's posts covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the conversation had a very important article today relating to the question of global carbon dioxide emissions, which have bounced back after COVID-19 restrictions and are likely to reach close to pre-pandemic levels this year. The new numbers vividly illustrate the global challenge posed by decades of delayed climate policy and investment. To meet the 2050 goal of the Paris Agreement, which calls for limits to warming temperatures, nations would now have to cut emissions every year by an amount greater than the combined carbon output of Germany and Saudi Arabia. The troubling finding comes as the COP26 climate talks continue in Glasgow in the last-ditch bid to keep dangerous global warming at bay. The analysis was undertaken by the Global Carbon Project. That's a consortium of scientists from around the world who produce, collect and analyse global greenhouse gas information. The fast recovery in CO2 emissions following last year's sharp drop should come as no surprise. The world's strong economic rebound has created a surge in demand for energy and the global energy system is still heavily dependent on fossil fuels. Emissions snap back like a rubber band, said Robert Jackson, an Earth System Science professor at Stanford University and chair of the Global Carbon Project. That's the same thing that we saw after 2008, when emissions dropped 1.5% in 2009 and then jumped 5% in 2010, as if nothing had changed. Most concerning is the long-term upward trend of CO2 emissions from oil and gas and this year's growth in coal emissions, which together are far from trending towards net zero by 2050. Global CO2 emissions from fossil fuels dropped by 5.4% in 2020 compared to the previous year, but they are set to increase by about 4.9% above 2020 levels this year, reaching 36.4 billion tonnes. This brings them almost back to the 2019 levels. And we can expect another 2.9 billion tonnes of CO2 emissions this year from the net effect of everything we do to the land, including deforestation, degradation and revegetation. This brings us to a total of 39.4 billion tonnes of CO2 to be emitted by the end of this year. The fast growth in emissions matches the corresponding large increase in energy demand as the global economy opens up, with the help of the $17.2 trillion in economic stimulus packages around the world. CO2 emissions from all fossil fuel types, that's coal, oil and natural gas, grew this year, with emissions from coal and natural gas set to grow more in 2021 than they fell in 2020. Emissions from global coal use were declining before the pandemic hit in early 2020, but then they surged back this year, and emissions from global gas use have returned to the rising trend seen before the pandemic. CO2 emissions from global oil use remain well below pre-pandemic levels, but are expected to increase in coming years as road transport and aviation recover from COVID-related restrictions. Emissions from China have recovered faster than any other countries. It's among the few countries where emissions grew in 2020, up by 1.4%, followed by a projected growth of 4% this year. Taking these two years together, CO2 emissions from China in 2021 are projected to be 5.5% above 2019 levels, reaching 11.1 .1 billion tonnes. China accounted for 31% of global emissions in 2020. Coal emissions in China are estimated to grow by 2.4% this year, and if realised, it would match what was thought to be China's peak coal emission in 2013. India's CO2 emissions are projected to grow even faster than China's this year, at 12.6% after a 7.3% fall last year. And emissions this year are set to be 4.4% above 2019 levels, reaching 2.7 billion tonnes.
India accounted for 7% of global emissions in 2020. Emissions from both the US and the European Union are projected to rise at 7.6% this year. That would lead to emissions that are respectively 3.7% and 4.2% below 2019 levels. The US and EU respectively accounted for 14% and 7% of global emissions in 2020. Emissions in the rest of the world, including all international transport, particularly aviation, are projected to rise 2.9% this year but remain 4.2% below 2019 levels. Together, these countries represent 59% of global emissions. The relatively large changes in annual emissions over the past two years had no discernible effect in the speed at which CO2 accumulates in the atmosphere. CO2 concentrations and associated global warming are driven by the accumulation of greenhouse gases, particularly CO2, since the beginning of the Industrial Era. This accumulation has accelerated in recent decades. To stop further global warming, global CO2 emissions must stop or reach net zero, the latter meaning that any remaining CO2 emissions would have to be compensated for by removing an equivalent amount from the atmosphere. Carbon budgets are a useful way of measuring how much CO2 can be emitted for a given level of global warming. And in their latest analysis, they updated the carbon budget outlined by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, in August this year. From the beginning of 2022, the world can emit an additional 420 billion tonnes of CO2 to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees, or 11 years of emissions at this year's rate. To limit global warming to 2%, the world can emit an additional 1,270 billion tonnes of CO2, or 32 years of emissions at the current rate. These budgets are the compass to net zero emissions, consistent with the pledge by many countries to reach net zero emissions by 2050. CO2 emissions need to decline by 1.4 billion tonnes each year on average. That is an amount comparable to the drop during 2020 of 1.9 billion tonnes. This fact highlights the extraordinary challenges ahead and the need to increase short and long-term commitments to drive down global emissions. Coal used worldwide peaked in 2014 and researchers have noted with some relief that coal was in decline, but this year has challenged that assumption with coal burning rising above its 2019 level, although still below the record year. The bouncing coal is quite surprising, said Glenn Peters, research director for the Centre of International Climate Research in Oslo and a global carbon project member. We thought China had peaked coal, but it's now clawed back over the peak. During the previous decade, CO2 emissions fell in 23 countries that make up about a quarter of the world's total. This group includes the US, which is the second biggest annual polluter, and the biggest historically, Japan, Mexico and 14 European countries. Energy use from renewable sources grew more than 10% this year, on par with the recent average, despite an unprecedented temporary decline in energy use. And the data adds even greater urgency to the already breathless work this week and next in Glasgow, where nations are struggling to execute promises made in the 2015 Paris Agreement. The Global Carbon Project scientists revise their carbon budget, which is a kind of scientific ledger for estimating how much CO2 the atmosphere can hold before locking in a temperature threshold. To have a 50% shot at keeping global heating below 1.5 degrees centigrade beginning in 2022, the world can emit no more than 11 years worth of CO2 at the current rate. And to keep the temperature rise below 1.7 degrees centigrade or 2 degrees centigrade, there are 20 or 32 years worth of emissions left. It's not a threshold that once you reach a specific temperature, then everything goes berserk, said Corinne Lequel, a climate scientist of the University of East Anglia and the Global Carbon Project member. But the more warming, the more risks we take of destabilising all kinds of aspects of the climate system.
A revision to UN deforestation figures led the Global Carbon Project to a surprising new conclusion about CO2 emissions from land. Forest regrowth is larger than previously thought, which means trees and soils have soaked up more CO2 than expected over the last two decades. The deforestation rate, less the absorption rate, leaves a net decline in emissions that makes the 2021 estimates of 2.9 gigatons just 64% of the early 2000s rate. These numbers, however, are much less certain than the fossil fuel consumption data, given the complexity of estimating deforestation and regrowth. The revised but tentative deforestation numbers, combined with the historically small increases in the CO2 pollution rate the last decade, is a nice surprise in a world in need of one. That land use change emissions are likely considerably lower than previously expected means that it's a lot easier for us to turn global forests into a net sink rather than a source of CO2, said Zenki Husfala, Director of Climate and Energy at the Breakthrough Institute, which is not affiliated with the Global Carbon Project. And I personally think it's very important to have this sort of data in front of us when we consider making sensible decisions about what to do with regard to climate and warming and fossil fuels. And there has been a lot of noise, of course, in recent years, but the data, I think, is quite compelling now, which means that the case for action is ever more important. Unfortunately, in Australia, we are still putting our head very much in the sand and somehow are magically assuming that we can find our way to net zero without any inconvenience and without major change of direction. I think that's a pipe dream and I do think it's time to come to the party. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.